Hi, my name is Florian from Quality Guru, where I answer your questions and share knowledge about quality management. Today I will talk about Taguchi's loss function and what we can learn for it for quality management and for our own lives. So check it out. Taguchi is a very well-known quality guru, one of the persons in the world who made a major contribution on quality management with his ideas, with his tools, with his philosophy. He contributed so much and one of the concepts is the quality loss function. Quality loss function. So let's look at this. Previously, before Taguchi, we were mostly thinking, the world was mostly thinking in a binary logic. So that means if I, for example, take a manufacturing process, a product, as an example, I'm producing something and it needs to be in specification. So there's a certain target value and then around the target value there is a window within the specification. So everything what is within the specification I can sell to my customer and everything what is outside I cannot sell to my customer. For example, if I want to sell a bottle of beer and it says 0.3 liters on the bottle, maybe if it says 0.29, maybe I'm still able to sell it. Maybe if it says, if it really contains 0.31, maybe I'm still able to sell it. But if the bottle is then less filled, less filled, more empty, more empty, more empty, then probably there would be somehow somewhere a point where I cannot sell it. So this is the specification limit. It's probably also legally defined in the bottling industry. And here certain deviations are allowed because probably it's not technically possible to always hit the right spot 100% of the time. So there is some variation and this is allowed, so I'm able to sell it. So this is the logic. If it's in specification, I can sell it. No loss for nobody. If it's outside, there is a loss for me because I cannot sell it anymore. I have to do it maybe again, produce another product, another piece, and then I have a loss. In the loss function from Taguchi, he was thinking in a different way. He was thinking a little bit bigger. From He was seeing the big picture. So saying that here's a product with a target value, he was saying every time I deviate from the target value, I create losses and the losses add up the more I go away from my target. So why is it like that? For example, I explained already when it's outside my specification, then I cannot sell the product anymore because it's not complying with the specification. So it's a non-conforming product. I have to take it out and probably throw it away or maybe I can rework it, do some extra effort and manipulated in a certain way in order to be conforming. But why he would say within specification there's also loss. And here he says, now yeah, if you buy something, every time when something is not really as it should be, the customer is paying the price for this. So I'm selling you something, I'm the producer, I'm selling you something, you're taking it, and it's maybe borderline, it's right within the specification, but it's almost outside of the specification. So you are getting a product which is officially okay, but it's not as good as the one would be if it would be perfectly on target. So you see this, do you see this difference? He's thinking about on a global holistic scale, let's say somebody has to pay the price for it whenever there's some variation. So Variation here is the key word. Variation is the thing what we want to dominate and reduce to a minimum to always be on target. So he came up with other concepts like the uh, signal to noise ratio. It's all about reducing variation and also the concept of robust design. Robust design. That means design your process and your product in a way that it always hits the target perfectly. Why? In order to avoid any losses, any deviation, any variation from the target value. So how could this serve us in our life and as a 
philosophy in general. So basically it means in our organization, when we work maybe for ourselves, but also with our people and teams, that we strive for perfection. We always want to hit the spot, the target right there. That's where we want to be. We don't want to be deviated because every time we deviate, we are losing a little bit something. Let's look in today's world how often we are deviating from something and what does it cost? Yeah? So there's so many resources wasted. If we always would be on the target, we could save so much resources, so much metals, paper, water, energy, whatever it is we could save and we could live with so much less waste. We could also be so much more efficient because we would not need so much time in order to do things again and three times, four times, etc. So when we start thinking about it, reducing variation wherever we can, being more effective, our life can be also more to the point, working more on our targets and not fixing problems we generated for ourselves. And finally, in the quality philosophy, it's all about protecting the customer. So when we do something and we are always on target, we will ensure that the customer gets always satisfied and will continue buying from us because we are convincing them that this is the right, that we are the right partner for them. Let me know what you think about these ideas, Taguchi quality loss function and this journey to excellence, which for me implies this theory because we always want to be right on target. We don't want to do anything extra. We want to avoid all these wastes. So let me know what you think about it and I see you in the next video.